child jewelry makers. Welcome back to our mini series on jewelry tools and supplies for complete beginners. So today we're going to do a little demonstration on these um, crimping pliers. These are the ones by Zuron and I showed you another type but this is the type that I like and that I'm going to use today. We have our Beadalon two millimeter crimps in gold going to take a couple of those out on the mat and we're going to use our toggle clasp and I had shown you in our early video this uh, Beadalon seven strand beading wire which is a really good starter beading wire bead stringing wire but today I'm going to do my crimps on this gold bead stringing wire that comes as the starter pack in the curated bead box. Uh, we always say that's such a great box for people just getting started in jewelry because it's not very expensive. You get a lot of variety of bead colors and sizes to work with, but it always comes with a starter pack of findings and supplies for your stash really and so if you don't have a lot to work with it's a really great box so that you can practice with different things get accustomed to different things and even decide what types of materials you enjoy making with and others you would rather not work with so anyway i took this out of one of my curated bead box supplies because that's how it always comes in a little plastic bag and I thought we would work with this today because I know you all have heard over and over from YouTubers that the curated bead box is an excellent box for beginners so that's what we're going to use today. So we're going to crimp both ends of this gold bead stringing wire and I'm going to show you guys something that is not necessary but you can use it i sometimes use them and sometimes i don't uh, i probably wouldn't use it i'm actually going to crimp this and get it started for a necklace that i'm working on so the first thing that you do is take one of your little crimp tubes and feed it on that wire now you can simply make the a loop with the wire and feed it back down through the crimp tube like that and just have your loop to work with or you can go ahead and loop your toggle or whatever you're stringing you know whatever you're stringing on and then crimp it um, or you can use these wire guardians and you know they do keep the um, wire from rubbing and having too much friction but it's really not necessary but if you're going to use one you put your crimp tube on your wire first and then you're going to feed your wire through this little before I string let me stop and show you in case you've never seen these before you have two little holes in the bottom and if you can see on the side let me get my pliers so my fingers are out of the way if you can see there is a little channel so your wire comes up through that hole and it rests in that channel and then goes back down the other side through the hole so that's what we're going to do we have already strung on our little crimp tube and we're going to feed the wire through one hole and rest it in that channel and bring it back down the other side okay and then I can I use these when I told you that these had such a tiny tip and they were useful for a lot of things this would be one of those things so once you um, let me move my fingers out of the way once you have done that you want to pull everything down and make it nice and tight but that wire needs to also feed back through that little tube let me show you I'm trying to do it in the camera so now we have something that looks like that and so now I can use the tip of these nice small crimping pliers and just pull everything down 
So since I did use this wire guardian, I like to come in with my pliers and just bend it in a little bit. It just looks a little bit neater to me. Not necessary, but it's just become my habit. Now also, it might be a little bit challenging because we have nothing strung on this wire, but also before we crimp, I want to make sure that those wires are not crossed or twisted on themselves. So I have it where I want it and my wires are now absolutely not crossed. And so now I want to use the back channel of this crimping plier, the largest channel, and just rest that tube in that channel. I'm trying to stay in the camera, so be patient with me. Just want to rest that tube in that channel and then if you can see that tooth is going to come down and fold that tube in half and give us the shape of a taco. So I have a hold of it and you can adjust it before you clamp down. Make sure it is actually where you want it and then I'm just going to press down. And when I remove that tool you can see we made a little taco shape and those two wires are now crimped in that tube separately. So now we're going to turn it on its side and use the next channel up to gently fold it in half. And then you can work your way up the plier using the channels, pressing. You don't want to smash it. You know, you don't want to squeeze it as hard as you possibly can because you can crack these tubes in half and that's what I was telling you in our earlier part of this series that those cheap crimp tubes that have a super thin wall sometimes when you're crimping down they break in half or they have no integrity and when there's any stress on your piece of jewelry then it will break so investing in a little bit better crimp tube makes doing it easier and it makes your jewelry last longer. So now we simply want to give that a little bit of a tug and you know pull on it and make sure that it's doing its job and we got a great crimp. Now I am going to just string a few beads on just to show you. So as I said I am working on a necklace so I took this opportunity to put out the things that are going to go in that necklace that I'm designing. So I'm just going to string on a few beads just to show you what happens with the tail of wire. So I'm just going to put a few of these faceted black and gold crystals and let's get them down. Now you can cut away this tail right where it exits the crimp tube but just for leverage it doesn't really give any extra security honestly but just for leverage I like to feed that through a few the first few beads on my strand and it's again it doesn't add any extra security but if anything were to happen when you're finished stringing and designing and you need a little bit of leverage something to hold on to or you just never know when you're designing a piece that things go wrong you know that's life so I always leave myself that little bit strung back through the beads now we have not talked about crimp covers um, we I'm going to do that in another video because I'm just demonstrating for you guys the crimping process um, and you really want to do that at the very last once everything is strung. So anyway, um, we're not going to do that today, but I'll show you that. And I have, I've used them in some of my other videos. So if you go back into a playlist, you can see that. So I'm going to just take one of my small bead stoppers. It's called a bead bug and just pinch this off because we're going to do the same thing on the other end. So I'm just going to hang on to those beads and those two tails and that way I won't lose any of that. So let's go to the other end of this wire just so that we can do that together again. And we're going to repeat the same process. Always your crimp tube goes on your bead stringing wire first and then your wire guardian if you're using it again. 
I didn't include it in the supplies for beginner jewelry makers because I made jewelry for many, many, many years before I ever bought a wire guardian. And then at some point I got them and, and I use them sometimes, but it's really up to your preference. And believe me, you will start to have preferences on supplies and tools when you start making a lot of jewelry. So we're going to do that same thing where we fed the wire up one side of the wire guardian in that little tube get the wire lined up in the channel, feed it back down the other side through the other tube, and then we want to feed it through our crimp, and then we can use our pliers. You can use your fingers too, but I like using the tips of these small pliers, and just tighten everything down. Just pull it down, and that gives us a little bit of a tail on our wire. So once again, if you can see, those wires are absolutely crossed and before I crimp, I want to uncross them. And I just wanna move that crimp tube back up into position and hold those wires uncrossed like that. And then I'm going to, once again, place that tube in the back channel of the crimping pliers and I've got the tooth resting on it, and once I've checked to make sure, see it just twisted, once I've checked to make sure it's where I want it, I will just press down and it's crimped. Now we use the next channel up and give it a little press and just move up the channels until you have that taco truly folded in half. And then you can use your pliers pull on it, make sure that you did get a good crimp, and that is ready for beads to be strung. So again, I thank you for being with me today. I hope this demonstration was slow enough and was shown to you with close enough views and made easy enough that you feel like you are able to take your crimp tubes and your crimping pliers and do this on your own. If not, please rewind the video, watch it again, pause, and you know, don't give up, don't get frustrated, keep practicing, it, it can only get better. Thank you again, have fun on your beading mats, child jewelry makers.